Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we can go about doing a Windows privilege escalation using the unquoted service path vulnerability. The unquoted service path vulnerability arises when a service is created whose path to the service executable contains spaces and is not enclosed within double quotes. If a low privileged user can write to the location along the unquoted service path, they could exploit the vulnerability. For this demonstration, I'll be using VirtualBox on my local machine. I'll have one updated virtual install of Kali Linux, one virtual install of either Windows 7 or Windows 10, and my VirtualBox network settings will be set to host networking. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a command prompt, and at the prompt here, I'm going to type in ifconfig. And what I'm looking for is the IP address attached to my Ethernet Zero adapter. It is 192.168.56.132. I have to have this for the reverse shell that I'm going to establish when I launch that payload from my Windows 10 machine back on over here to my Kali machine up inside of Metasploit. Let's go ahead and close out the terminal. I'm next going to create a working folder and place it right here on my desktop. I'm going to call this USP for unquoted service path. Go ahead and create that real quick. Let's bring up a terminal. And we're next going to create a payload using MSF Venom. It's time for me to zoom in here just a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And let's go ahead and make the screen bigger. All right, so now you can see everything that I'm doing. So I've copied and pasted in the script to create the payload using MSF Venom. And it just says that I'm going to create a MetaPredator session or a reverse shell back on over to my local host, which is 192.168.56.132. And I will be listening on port 4444 for that reverse shell. Also in the script, I told it where to save the payload once it was generated. And I told it to save it to my working folder, USP. So if I open up this folder, you'll see that I now have that update.exe that I just created. And we're now ready to create the listener for that reverse shell. So let's open up another terminal. And at the prompt, we're going to type in MSF console for Metasploit. Once I have that typed in correctly, I'll just hit enter. Give it a second. So at my Metasploit prompt, I want to go ahead and look for an exploit. And the one I want to use is the multi-handler exploit. So I'm going to tell it that I want the multi-handler exploit by typing in the word use. Give it a space, multi, forward slash handler, hit enter. And we now have that exploit loaded up. We next have to set the payload. The payload that we want to use is the Windows forward slash metapreter forward slash reverse underscore TCP payload. So I've typed in the word set, give it a space, followed by the name of the payload that I want to load. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and now we have that payload ready to go. We next have to set the localhost IP address for the reverse shell. Now to do this, I've typed in the word set, give it a space, typed in the word lhost, give it a space. Now this is the IP address of my Kali machine, and that's why we took a look at it before we started this process. So I've typed in 192.168.56.132. This is my IP address. Your IP address may differ. Go ahead and hit enter. Now the next thing we have to do is set the port that we want Kali to be listening on to receive that reverse shell. So at the prompt I type in the word set space L port space 4444 and that's the port that Kali will be listening on when I launch that payload from my Windows 10 target. Go ahead and hit enter. So once we have confirmed that everything is correct, I can just type in run and hit enter, give it a second, and now my Kali machine has Metasploit configured as a listener for a reverse shell. Let's go ahead and minimize our listener, and let's bring up a new prompt. So to get this payload over to the Windows 10 target, I'm going to try to use some type of social engineering experiment here, where I'm going to Pretend that I am enticing the user to open up a web page and go to a certain URL on the internet. And when he gets to that URL, there will be a 
infected payload waiting for him to click on. That's going to start the download process for the payload on that user's machine. They'll then launch the payload and we're in. That's the whole premises. Of course, it's not that simple. I have to be able to convince the user that this is a legit payload and that it behooves them to go ahead and click on it so that they can have whatever it is they're looking for. So let's go ahead and start my Apache web service. I've typed in service space Apache 2 space start. Go ahead and hit enter. Give it a second. Comes back to the prompt letting me know that that service started successfully. The next thing you have to do is place that payload up inside of the HTML folder on your Kali machine. To do this, I'm just going to open up my work folder. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy this payload here like so. Close out that folder. Go on over here to the file system. Let's scroll on down till we come to var. There's my var folder. Move this over a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Let's go into the www folder. And from there, we'll go into the HTML folder. And from there, you're just going to right click inside of the HTML directory. And you're just going to select paste and place that payload inside of the HTML directory. Now that's going to make this payload available up on the web server. When the individual launches the web URL that I'm going to use, they'll have access to this update.exe. That's simple. Let's go ahead and close this out. Now I'm over here on my target. Let's go ahead and bring up a command prompt real quick. I got to make sure that we have connectivity. I don't want to keep going around in circles. So I'm going to type in IP config. And my IP address on this Windows 10 target is using the same network IP as my Kali machine which is 192.168.56.129. 129 is the host IP. Now, if I want to confirm that I have connectivity, I'll just type in ping. I'll type in the IP address of my Kali machine. I'll just go ahead and hit enter. And I start coming back with some positive responses. That's good. You can go ahead and close that out. So to stop the Windows Defender from actually blocking us from bringing over this payload, we're going to have to go up inside of the settings for Windows Security and Updates and add an exclusion. And I'm going to add the exclusion for the desktop folder. So I'm going to place my mouse inside of the Windows 10 virtual machine. I'm then going to go to my keyboard. I'm going to hold down the Windows key and press I. That brings up the settings on that virtual machine. Let's scroll on down until we come to Update and Security. From here, we're going to select Windows Security. And from there, we're going to select over in the right window pane, viruses and threat protection. We're now going to scroll on down until we come to virus and threat protection settings. Here, we're going to click on where it says manage settings. We're going to scroll on down just a little bit. And we're going to stop when we find exclusions. From there, we're going to add an exclusion. So click on the add or remove exclusions. You're going to add an exclusion. You're going to select a folder. You're going to browse on over to your desktop. That's going to be your exclusion. When you've done that, you're going to see this inside of the exclusions. You're good to go. Go ahead and close this out. Close that out. And now we should be OK with Windows Defender not trying to block us when we bring over that update.exe payload. So the next thing we want to do is just go down here to the search bar on our target machine and we're going to type in IE for Internet Explorer. Go ahead and bring that up and we're going to go ahead and use the recommended settings. So once you're up inside of Internet Explorer, you're just going to go up to the address bar. You're going to type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of your Kali machine. My machine has the IP address of 192.168.56.132. I'm going to give that a forward slash, and now I'm going to give it the name of that payload, update.exe. And of course, you're free to name your payload whatever you want. So once I've connected to my web server over there on my Kali machine, I can just go ahead and do a save. You can do a save as. I've already saved it to my desktop. I don't need to do anything further at this point. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here. Cancel out the web page. Now I'm back to my desktop where I saved my payload, which is update.exe. Now, if you're watching your Kali machine, 
Let's go ahead and bring back up my terminal here. So if you're watching your Kali terminal, when I launch that payload, you're going to see that the reverse shell has been completed. Let's go ahead and bring back up my Windows 10 machine. I'm just going to go ahead and double click this. I'll say yes to this. I'll come back on over here to my Kali machine. And you'll see now that I have a MetaPredator session established between Kali and my Windows 10 target. So now we have that reverse shell. So this is going to give me access to the Windows machine remotely. I next need to create a persistent reverse shell. Now to do this, I'm hoping that I can exploit the unquoted service path that's available to me on the Windows 10 machine. So the first thing we need to do is perform a check on our Windows target to see if there is such a vulnerability present. To perform this check, I'll drop down into a shell on the remote machine. And I now have access to my Windows 10 machine via the command prompt. So the next thing I want to do is run the following command. I'm going to go ahead and just paste this on in here because it's so big. And again, this is the command that we use to check for the unquoted service path vulnerability on any Windows machine. Now once I have the command typed in correctly, I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back and it says that it didn't find anything. Since we don't have an unquoted service path vulnerability present on my Windows 10 target, we can go ahead and create one. The first thing we need to do is create a directory that's going to hold the service executable. So I'm going to copy and paste the following into my prompt here at the MetaPredator session. And so I've typed in MKDIR. That stands for Make Directory. And I've wrapped the following in quotes. C colon backslash. I want you to make up inside of program files a folder called Not Legit. Inside of Not Legit, create me another subfolder called Bad Service. And then wrap that up in a final quote. Let's go ahead and hit enter and it comes back to the prompt letting me know if that command completed successfully. Now the next thing we have to do is create a real service. Now this is going to be a bogus service, but the machine is going to think that it's real. So at the prompt, I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in here. I'm going to type in SC space create and in quotes, I am not a real service. Close off that quote. And now I have to type in bin path equals, and this is the path to the executable that is going to launch that service. And now once the service has been launched, I'm also going to set it to start automatically each time the machine is rebooted. So I have set start equals auto. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back letting me know that that was successfully created. Now for this to work, all the built-in users, that is to say any user that logs on to that Windows 10 machine, must have the ability to launch that executable. So to do this, I'm going to use iCackles, and I'm going to set the permissions for that folder that will allow the built-in users group to have write capability. So at the prompt, I've typed in iCackles space in double quotes, C colon backslash program files backslash not legit. Now, why haven't I gone into the other subfolder? Well, because when I set the permissions on the not legit folder, the subfolders that are beneath it will inherit those same permissions. So let's go ahead and let's hit enter. And it lets me know if that also was completed successfully. So when I get done here, I'm going to go back on over and drop in that update.exe inside of that bad service subfolder. So at the prompt, I've typed in iCackle space in double quotes, C colon backslash program files backslash not legit, and wrap that with another double quote. Now what I'm checking here is the permissions for that particular subfolder called not legit. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back and we can see that the built-in users have all the permissions they need to be able to launch that executable. So if I wanted to take the time, I could actually do this from the command prompt over on my MetaPredator session and copy this or move this over to the bad service folder. But I don't have the time because i got to keep this video short. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this right here like so. Let's go ahead and just copy it. Let's go up inside of my file explorer, C drive, 
program files not legit bad service I'm gonna right click in here and I'm just gonna paste that payload and there it is so let's go ahead and connect the dots let's go take a look at my services real quick and if we scroll down to the eyes You'll see that I have a service that is called I am not a real service. That's the one we created. So I'll just go ahead and double click this. And if you look at the path, it is not wrapped in quotes. So this qualifies as a unquoted service path vulnerability. It's not wrapped in quotes and there are spaces in the path to the executable. So now when this service starts, I'm going to throw another reverse shell or a new reverse shell back onto my Kali. And any time this machine is restarted, regardless of who restarts it, I will have a reverse shell sent back on over to my Kali machine. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. And then we're going to quit my Metapreter session. And now I'm back at my Metasploit prompt. And I've still got that exploit for multi-handler. So I can still type in run. It's all configured. Everything's there already. And again, I am now set up for another reverse shell listener. So let's now go on back on over to my Windows 10 machine. And we see that my service, my bogus service, is set to start any time that this machine is reloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and just pretend that I've reloaded the machine. It's coming back up and it needs to start the service. It's already set to automatic. It just has to be told to start. And so the machine is trying to start. I go back on over here to my Kali machine, and there is my Metapreter prompt. And so in summary, you got to see how we created a payload, have the user access that payload. We were then able to place that payload up inside of a bogus service path that we created, and then have that service automatically start each time the machine is rebooted, and reestablish that reverse shell back on over here to our Kali machine. I want to thank you for watching. I'm Professor K, and I hope to see you in my next video.